All programs, regardless of whatever the percentages are written, whatever the repetitions and sets are written, it's quite irrelevant if you don't actually have consistency. Let's just say that I write a percentage, let's just say I'm taking about 75%, okay? And I write three reps for about six sets. Okay, this is actually how weightlifting uh, coaches write it. It's percentage and then repetitions and sets, okay? Um, this whole set and rep thing is actually, I don't know where the heck that came along, okay? Um, so if I say 70%, 75% for three repetitions and six sets, what you actually have to do is you have to make sure that every single repetition feels consistent. Um, it has to feel like two, three, one, two, three. It can't be like one, two, and then three. It doesn't count, okay? Or maybe one, this one feels really funny, two, and then you get back to the third one, and that's good. Uh, no, it doesn't count. That set has to be redone because the consistency is off. A lot of times when you see top level lifters, when they are able to catch, boom, drop, catch, boom, drop, they have come to a level where they are so consistent that they can do all three repetitions within a span of maybe about 10 seconds, 15 seconds. It takes time to be that consistent. Now, why am I so adamant about being consistent throughout the repetition ranges? As I say, you did this rep like that. And the second rep, it went like this, okay? Maybe it was a little bit off-centered, maybe you went off the heels a little bit. It doesn't, it makes you think, it makes you think and your brain goes, oh shit, made a mistake, okay? So instead of going for one repetition, two, made a mistake, and then try going for three again, just reset the whole set, remove it, do it again, okay? The moment you have to think before you lift, you are actually interfering with the thought process, with the learning process of the brain, of the patterning. You are actually recreating a certain neural pattern that basically you're doing something different. It's like saying, let's just say you do a back squat, right? All of a sudden you do a back squat and then you're at high bar, high bar, and all of a sudden you, you, you don't put it down to your shoulders and then do a low bar. You don't do that because then you're reprogramming the pattern. So why should you do that when you're doing a snatch or a clean or a pull? Very importantly, these movements are skill movements, extremely skilled movements. With squats, you can even make a mistake or two. It's not such a big deal because you're just trying to get stronger. Albeit, it is best to always be consistent throughout all your pattern, all your movements. But with weightlifting movements, it's such a high skill movement that you want to be 100% consistent. Okay? So that's why you don't want to mess things up. You don't want to keep on going if you make a mistake because the consistency, the patterning in the brain, it distorts that patterning. Okay. Second reason is because it's a highlighter. Okay. It shows the mistakes. Weights are highlighters. Sorry for the atrocious handwriting. I'm kind of like in a funny angle here. Um, look at weights more as a way to highlight the mistakes and you get stronger by eliminating the mistakes and being more consistent. You don't get stronger by just adding weights. Weights on its own does not get you stronger. Okay, it means you can lift the weights but doesn't mean you get stronger because you're talking about consistency here. You're talking about being able to replicate the strength. You're not talking about being able to do it once on a good day and then all of a sudden on a bad day, you lose 15% of your lifts. That's not training. That is this showing off, okay? Remember, weights are a highlighter of the error. If the weights causes you to make mistakes on the third rep, that means you make sure that the third rep is good. So this set, eliminate, doesn't count. So out of the six sets, this rep, the set doesn't count. So you restart, you still have six sets. One, two, three, perfect, good, this counts. One, two, three, perfect, this counts. One, two, three, mistake. Okay, now, this set doesn't count. So you're back to having another four more sets to complete. Okay, so four more sets. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, 
all six sets are consistent, boom, that's it, finish. You have con confidently done all your repetition, all your work. Now, the biggest advantage of this, of this is you don't, you feel like you've actually done work because you're not shifting around. The best thing about this is it actually makes you feel you worked. A lot of people say, oh, I didn't have a really good training day. That's because you're inconsistent. Your patterns are moving here and there. Okay, that is why you feel like you're not having a good workout. If you have all six sets, or maybe if you go up to eight sets because you, eight pseudo sets, uh, whereas you only have six real sets, at least you feel that you've done work. If it keeps on changing, you will not feel like you've learned anything. That is why consistency is so, so high in importance. Now, in the event that, say, uh, right now you're at 85% for uh, three repetitions uh, for eight sets, okay? And you find it one, two, damn it, one, two, damn it, one, damn it, ah, three. So you just go like, okay, I consistently make mistakes with this. I cannot seem to get this 85%. Do you call Kirk in the middle of the night if you're in America? No, not really. What you do is just a little bit of common sense. Go back down to 60%, okay? Then go up to 70%. And then back to 77%. So you start to jump at odd numbers so that the brain doesn't really recognize that small percentages. It, it, you, you feel psychologically that uh, 75%, 77%, that's roughly about the same. Okay, then you move up to maybe about 83%, and all of a sudden your brain might think that it's only 80%, and then you move up to 85%, and maybe your brain will think that it's 82%. It's just a way of tricking your brain. It's not scientifically proven or anything, but I have found through experience that just going back up like this, waving it down, and then going back up again, you should be able to hit your sets. Okay, so this is the most important thing about using online programming. You need to have consistency because you want to feel like you worked. Okay, by changing the patterns, you won't feel like you've worked because you don't know if it's this pattern, this pattern, this. You don't know which pattern you bloody well want to use. But if you've done all patterns like this, you know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, you feel like all those repetitions are real work. And you're gonna go back feeling good. You're gonna go back feeling like you've actually done work. So this is why consistency is so important and that's how you wave it back and forth to get stronger, okay? Have a nice day.